On this site in 1789 was a tavern called the Indian Queen. It was a very important place in the early history of Wilmington. As the city grew, there were others who wanted to make this spot more refined. So they decided to tear down the building and build a fine hotel. And the hotel was called the Clayton House. The shell of that building is still here. And the theater came in when the hotel became obsolete. The Queen Theater was the most ornate movie theater of any of the movie theaters on Market Street. It was quite a movie palace. It was a 2,000 seat movie theater and they had a $10,000 molar organ and a, a 10 piece orchestra that played. The stage itself was huge, 64 by 40. This movie theater was to give the moviegoer a um, palatial experience in watching movies. They had a big marquee out the front with all the lights underneath, so it was always well lit. You meet somebody you know, haven't seen them for a while. It was just a great, great feeling. They just announced us and here we They go. also had vaudeville shows. To play the queen, it was something big. We always had one dressing room. The spiral staircase that took you down from the dressing rooms. We were very popular back then, very popular. There was a majesty about the place that you couldn't miss. Standing on that stage and looking out there, you could just see that the room was filled with possibilities. It was inspiration to sort of put our heads together very quickly and figure out if there was a way that we could light up the Queen and bring her back to life. The Buccini Poland Company came uh, into the city and said they had an idea to bring the Queen back and we just thought it was a great idea and worth pursuing. The timing was right, the partners were right, the city of Wilmington was ready. I always knew that the Queen would be lit again. And very importantly, our friends at WXPN have a huge base of listeners and members. We're proud of the fact that this project wouldn't have happened without XPN uh, and the XPN audience, which is really the audience that's gonna be going to uh, the World Cafe Live here at the Queen for years to come. The building is a $25 million restoration and it would be far more affordable to have t torn the whole building down. We had to bring it up to today's standards uh, with many additional elements uh, as required to run an operation such as World Cafe Live. The demolition and the preliminary engineering started in the fall of 2009 and proceeded through the winter with some of the structural improvements. We broke holes in the sides of the building and brought in very large pieces of earth moving equipment and excavation equipment. Getting these historic tax credits clearly set us on the right path. From that point on, we have relied step by step on community support. There's something that's still like missing between downtown Wilmington and the riverfront, and the Queen Theater is going to fill it up, not just with a beautifully renovated building, but with great music. We think the anchor needs to be music, because music tends to draw people, regardless of location. That will be the engine that grows uh, this area of town, because there all of a sudden becomes a there there. Early on, our concept was that we were going to really restore it, it was going to be all repainted and so forth. But as the roof came off and the building was, was full of light and we could really see what was there, we decided that the old lady had some character. We had fascinating exterior shots, but we didn't have any shots of the interiors. We had no idea what was in there. We only had what we could see. And the most important word for all of us with this project was for the building to really feel authentic. The foundations of the old existing building were so shallow, 
we were going below those foundation levels. So we actually had to very carefully brace and hold those walls into place while we excavated out from underneath them and poured new concrete foundations and foundation walls and then come in and pour new slabs and, and new structure for the main floor of the downstairs live uh, facility. We're in the final stages of the facade restoration. The guys are putting the windows in on the upper floors. We've started roughing in the mechanicals and all the structural work in this area is now complete. The demolition part of this project has been very labor intensive and right behind me you can see an example of that where they've demolished the brick wall, it's going out one wheelbarrow at a time. These walls are double thick because of the acoustic uh, treatment that gets installed so that the World Cafe Live uh, studio is perfectly soundproof. The ductwork is huge. It was basically oversized because of the acoustic requirements. I'm standing on level four in the Queen Theater. Behind me you can see the large uh, scaffolding apparatus by putting in the scaffolding, it allowed all of that work to be going on simultaneously. It allows us to work uh, at close quarters to the, the work ahead of us. The original pilaster right here is where the Capitol used to sit that we took down, took to our shop and made a rubber mold of. And as you can see here, this is a replacement piece that will be installed right here. It was a huge opportunity to leave those elements visible to the public and leave this as a legacy to not only read the history of the building, but to the, the history of the culture of Wilmington and what had gone on in this building. After Thayer finished the ornate plaster work and then the scaffolding came down, the interior of the space really sort of revealed itself. It was frankly quite breathtaking. The building is sort of a marriage between old and new. So you'll see that as you walk throughout the building. On the technology side, the biggest two examples I can think of are the kitchens and the sound and lighting system. And that's probably the one where you, where you see the difference between old and new the most, where all of that new state-of-the-art sound technology is, is quite literally hanging from the roof. The construction crews, you know, they've done great work. The electrical in this building is an extremely complicated project to do. The mechanical systems are, are a marvel in terms of what they have to do, the number of people they have to serve. So hats off to, to all of these guys who've painted it, who've you know, just done every, every little piece of it so that what we end up with is a state-of-the-art facility where people can go and listen to music and really hear it. One of the miracles of lighting up the Queen is that during the two worst economic years since the Great Depression, uh, we were able to put all of this financing in place, all of the fundraising in place to make this project happen. The donor wall, it's just beautiful. On the wall, of course, are the donors' names, and those are the people who helped build this. Literally every single major player in our community from the corporate side to the foundation side to the government side to the individual side, everyone has basically touched or been a part of this program. The only way that this project is going to work is if the community supports it. And it's the only way Market Street will come back. One of the things that the city has to be is an entertaining city. It can't be just a business city or a residential city. The arts make communities bubble and bristle and make them exciting and I think you're going to see a lot of people coming here. It's going to be a very exciting place to be. And the feeling that we all get when we walk out onto the balcony or the main floor of the Queen and we look at both what's new and what was old is again just a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity and we're very lucky to, to be a part of it.